So federal district court judge Reggie Walton was thinking out loud in court on Friday, discussing how his colleague, Judge Emmett Sullivan, might go about challenging Donald Trump's pardon of Mike Flynn. Let's talk about that. Because having the courage to challenge criminal presidential pardons, like justice, matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Welcome to another episode of my podcast, Justice Matters. Uh, it's Sunday, and as you might know if you watch these daily YouTube videos, on Sunday I change it up a little, I shift my set around, I sit at my desk, um, I run my mouth for a little bit longer. The Sunday podcasts are a little longer than the daily videos I put up on YouTube. Um, and if you do tune in, you know that what I try to do every day, not just Sunday, is take the 30 years that I was a federal prosecutor, first as an Army JAG, prosecuting court-martial cases starting in the 80s, and then for nearly a quarter of a century as a Department of Justice federal prosecutor at the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia. I try to take what I learned inside the federal government for 30 years and apply it to what we're dealing with today, with this corrupt Trump administration. We try to identify legal issues, we try to put them in the larger context, and then we try to talk about some common sense solutions, right? Information we can use moving forward to help fix what Trump and company broke. So on Sundays, I always start with some housekeeping and um, First off, thank you for tuning in to the YouTube video or listening on a podcast. Um, feel free to hit subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, as you also may know, I'm on Patreon. So if you would like to become a more formal supporter of our all-volunteer efforts here, please go over to patreon.com and sign up to become a patron. If you do, I've got my uh, handy Team Justice stickers here. And uh, I will send you uh, some Team Justice stickers and a personalized handwritten note of thanks. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter, at Glenn Kirshner too. I'm on there all day and night trying to answer your legal questions. A couple of other housekeeping matters. Um, I wanted to thank a Team Justice member, um, Lionel, for sending me some really remarkable personalized bats of justice. And they read Glenn Kirshner, the Justice Club, because justice matters. And these are the real deal. I was not much of a baseball player, but these bats are the real deal. So thank you, Lionel. I will add these to what is fastly becoming my sort of makeshift uh, museum, modest museum to justice. Uh, Team Justice members are sending me stuff almost daily now. They're, you know, I'm receiving them here at my very small studio slash office in historic Leesburg, Virginia. Um, and everything is piling up and I've got it all displayed in my office. Maybe next Sunday I'll do a quick tour around the office so you can see um, where it is that, uh, that justice matters. That didn't make any sense. So what I'll do is I'll edit all that out later. No, I won't. I really can't edit stuff. Um, so, and then I also, I don't know, rather than having a couple of books sitting below a blink in here, I decided to go with one of my favorite sayings from one of my favorite rock artists, Warren Zevon, who uh, sang, send lawyers, guns, and money, the you know what has hit the fan. And with Donald Trump's endless attacks on the election, an election that all thinking people know understand and acknowledge Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won, it really feels like um, things are about to hit the fan. Um, but I also believe, one, that justice is coming, two, that justice matters, and three, we are one day closer to a post-Trump America today than we were yesterday. So hang in there, continue to hold on tight, because we are going to make it through this. Let's turn to the topic of the day, 
And that is what we heard from federal district court judge Reggie Walton in open court on Friday. So Judge Walton, as you may recall, you've, you've probably either seen the reporting or heard me talk about Judge Walton in earlier videos. Judge Walton is, first of all, a lion of the federal bench in Washington, D.C., something of a legend in criminal justice circles. And um, he has been presiding over some FOIA litigation, Freedom of Information Act litigation. Here are some of the pleadings right here in the case he's presiding over. And basically, news outlets have been trying to get the unredacted Mueller report. And Judge Walton has been presiding, has been ordering the release of certain portions of the Mueller report. You may recall, Judge Reggie Walton is the one who issued a written opinion finding, among other things, that Bill Barr spun the Mueller report. Bill Barr mischaracterized the Mueller report. These are Judge Walton's words. Bill Barr's account of the Mueller report was contradicted directly by the contents of the Mueller report, and Judge Walton capped it all off with Bill Barr lacks candor. That's a federal district court judge saying that. And now, in open court on Friday, in connection with some other FOIA litigation, here is some of what Judge Walton said. Here's a headline from the National Law Journal. Judge, that's Judge Walton, judge questions whether Trump's pardon of Michael Flynn is, quote, too broad, close quote. And I'm going to read just a couple of short passages that quote what Judge Walton said in court on Friday. But first of all, who is Judge Reggie Walton? Well, I had the pleasure of appearing before Judge Walton, albeit back in the 90s, when I was trying murder cases in Washington, D.C., which I did for 22 of my 30 years as a prosecutor. And Judge Walton was a judge presiding over murder cases in Washington, D.C. And here is his resume in 30 seconds. You ready? 1981, appointed by President Ronald Reagan to the Superior Court for the District of Columbia. 1991, reappointed by President George H.W. Bush. 2001, appointed as a federal district court judge in Washington, D.C. by George W. Bush. And in 2007, he was designated by Chief Justice Roberts of the Supreme Court as a FISA court judge, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act court judge. With those kind of Republican credentials, I don't think anybody can accuse Judge Walton of being an angry Democrat. And Judge Walton, among other things, said this on Friday about the Mike Flynn pardon, right? Because Mike Flynn, remember, pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI, was supposed to be sentenced by Judge Emmett Sullivan. That's Judge Walton's colleague, one of them, on the federal district court in Washington, D.C. And Donald Trump swooped in and pardoned Mike Flynn. But the criminal case against Mike Flynn is still pending. Hold on tight. Put a pin in that. We're going to talk about it in a minute. So here is some of what Judge Walton said on Friday about the Mike Flynn case being handled by his colleague, Judge Emmett Sullivan. Quote, U.S. District Court Judge Reggie Walton said his colleague, Emmett Sullivan, could find that, quote, the wording of the pardon is too broad in that it provides protections beyond the date of the pardon. Judge Walton continued, quote, I don't know what the impact, what impact that would have, what decision he, Judge Sullivan, would make if he makes that determination that the pardon of Mr. Flynn is for a period that the law does not permit. I don't know if that's correct or not, the judge continued. Theoretically, the decision could be reached because the wording in the pardon seems to be very, very broad. It could be construed, I think, 
as extending protections against criminal prosecutions after the date the pardon was issued. I don't know if Judge Sullivan will make that determination or not. Close quote. Now that is some of what Judge Walton said about the Mike Flynn pardon and the case that is pending before Judge Emmett Sullivan. So who is Judge Sullivan? Let me just tackle that for 30 seconds. Judge Emmett Sullivan, who I also had the honor of appearing before when I was a federal prosecutor, he was appointed to the bench, the Superior Court bench in Washington, D.C., first by President Ronald Reagan in 1984. He was then appointed to the District of Columbia Court of Appeals, an appellate court in Washington, D.C., that I argued many appeals before. It's a terrific appellate court. He was appointed as an appellate court judge in 1992 by George H.W. Bush. And then Judge Sullivan was made a federal district court judge after serving as an appellate court judge in 1994 by President Bill Clinton. So he has been appointed by two Republican presidents, one Democrat. Again, nobody who knows Judge Sullivan would accuse him of being an angry Democrat. And you know why I use that term. So that's who Judge Walton is. That's, that's who Judge Sullivan is. And there are a couple of takeaways from what Judge Walton just said about how Judge Sullivan might challenge Donald Trump's pardon of Mike Flynn. The first takeaway I contend is <clears throat> that a presidential pardon is challengeable in a court of law for criminality, corruption, abuse. I've been talking in recent weeks about folks that I call the presidential pardon purists. The people who say, oh my goodness, the Constitution says the president shall have the, par the power to grant reprieves and pardons. Can't possibly be challenged in court. Nothing we can do about it. He could criminally give away all the pardons he wants. He could charge a million dollars a pardon. He could pardon all white defendants and leave all defendants of color sitting in prison. He can do whatever he wants. He's the president and there's no exception to the pardon power. There is no viable way to challenge it in court. Well, I've been saying all along that's nonsense. The Constitution provides all sorts of powers grants powers to the president and the executive branch. It, it grants powers to the legislative branch. It grants powers to the judiciary, all of which, all of which I contend can be challenged for crime in the way those powers are wielded, for abuse in the way those powers are executed. Heck, not being able to challenge a criminal president or a criminal executive branch is what brought us to the brink of the end of our democracy. Not hyperbole. You know, we've gone right up to the edge and we've looked over the brink with Donald Trump and his corrupt cabal. And fortunately, the American voters pulled us back because they overwhelmingly voted Donald Trump out of office and Joe Biden into office, but not being able to challenge criminality in the upper echelons of our federal government, including the exercise of presidential power, is what brought us to where we are. And it's a dangerous place. It's a place our country should never find itself. So yeah, I disagree with the presidential pardon purists. And apparently, so does Judge Walton, because, no, he didn't decide an issue regarding the legality, the constitutionality of the Mike Flynn pardon, but he sure talked about it in open court. He was ruminating over it. He was debating it. He didn't decide it, but it tends to rebut the notion that you can't challenge a presidential pardon when you have a federal district court judge the person who would be empowered to decide a challenge against a presidential pardon, ruminating about how his colleague, Judge Sullivan, might go about challenging a presidential pardon. You know, 
Will that later rest the argument that you can't challenge a presidential pardon in court? Probably not. But presidential pardons will be challenged. Probably Mike Flynn's by Judge Sullivan, and I'll talk about that in a minute. And certainly the dozens of corrupt and criminal pardons, I suspect, are just around the corner. So the first takeaway I suggest is that presidential pardons can be challenged. And indeed, Judge Walton talked about how they might be challenged. The second takeaway, about a week ago, Bill Barr filed a motion in Mike Flynn's case saying, I hereby demand the Department of Justice, the prosecutors demand immediate dismissal of Mike Flynn's case. That was a week ago. Mike Flynn's case ain't been dismissed by Judge Sullivan. So Judge Sullivan has not been bullied into immediately dismissing Mike Flynn's case because of this corrupt pardon that Donald Trump issued. So, you know, apparently Bill Barr's demand for an immediate dismissal didn't have the desired effect. Second, in that motion for immediate dismissal that Judge Sullivan has not granted, Bill Barr also told Judge Sullivan, you may not hold a hearing. That would be inappropriate. Can't do it. Well, you know what? With a week now passing since Bill Barr filed for an immediate dismissal and told Judge Sullivan that he may not hold a hearing, my money continues to ride on Judge Sullivan holding a hearing. Now more than ever, in the wake of Judge Reggie Walton ruminating about how the Mike Flynn pardon could be challenged. So folks, there is a lot that is to come on the pardon front. And um, I suspect we're going to be talking about the scope of presidential pardons. We're going to be talking about whether a president can lawfully pardon himself. He can't. We're going to be talking about whether a president can lawfully pardon a co-conspirator, somebody with whom he did crime. He can't. But he'll try. He'll try. And we'll be here to discuss it. And more importantly, people will be in the courts, federal court judges who have devoted their entire careers, their entire lives to upholding the integrity of the criminal justice system. They've spent their whole lives sort of living by an allegiance to the rule of law. Men like Emmett Sullivan and Reggie Walton. And they will be in there in the courts and they will be doing the right thing. Folks, as always, thank you for tuning in. Um, please stay safe. Uh, please stay tuned. And I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.